I'm delighted to welcome Chris Southcott, who's our guest this morning. And Chris is a freelance IT technician. And um, before we start, let's see some of the work that Chris does. That was great, Chris. So um, a freelance IT technician, tell us what that means and, and actually what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, IT technician, that's, that's quite a, a nebulous thing to begin with anyways, because I, I, personally for me, IT is a very broad church to begin with. It could be anything from basically being the, the guy at the Apple help desk sorting out people's phones to someone who's doing with cybersecurity. It's all still dealing with information technology. Um, so for me, uh, what I'm doing at the moment is a sort of a broad range of different things. So I'm, I'm managing networks. I am dealing with remote access at the moment. That's basically my latest project. So we could all actually remote access from home and still able to do our video editing projects and all the wonderful other creative stuff that we tend to do. Um, as well as the boring, more mundane stuff, like actually making sure all the laptops are up to date and um, just making sure everything ticks over nicely so that we, it's basically greasing the wheels of industry, effectively, for what we're doing. So I know you're freelance and I know you work for, currently for Hawk AV. Tell us if you can, what sort of things do Hawk AV do? So uh, in more normal times, I will probably sort of say that um, Hawk AV are... Um, they're more geared up for corporate events um, as opposed to sort of larger scale gigs. I know that you guys have done a talk with uh, another uh, person I know of who works at Pierce Hire, who they tend to do, do the big sort of big shows like 1975. I know Jake's done some stuff on. Um, they do the big shows, the big lighting, the big power, the big audio. Hawk AV sort of do the more niche um, element of that, which is more corporate side of things. So we tend to rock up with a couple of uh, Three, a couple of three people, some speakers, some PowerPoint, um, help out with some audio. And um, basically for small to mid-sized conferences, that's kind of our bread and butter. As we've transitioned into the world of virtual events, um, and that's how I sort of sidestepped in my sort of professional role, um, we are facilitating that on a virtual basis. So we're using Zoom, we're using Teams, and, and then packaging it up and and. Uh, sending it back out potentially as a, as a restream or as there to facilitate and help these people out to make the event better, uh, uh, technically speaking, um, or just work smoother. So, you know, it, to be honest, we've kind of sort of been glorified help desk to a point in some capacity, but then we also are, you know, we can end up being like a full scale TV production. We're taking these individual feeds and then we're spitting them back out of something else. So what's great there is that, that some of the things you mentioned, uh, we all know. We all know about Zoom. We all know about PowerPoint, those sort of things. So uh, I think one of my questions really about um, working with IT is I think sometimes people think it's going to be fairly um, uh, traditional. It's straightforward. It's fact based. It's technical. And yet it's creative. And, and I think you're. Problem solving is maybe one of the ways that do, do you find it creative? What you is it creative? Does it feel creative? It can be. It can be. As you say, with the problem solving, you have to you do have to sometimes think a little bit outside the box in order to make things work. One of the examples I can give here with the, the guys at Hawk is when it all went a bit Pete Tong last year uh, with COVID and everything else, and literally I was sitting on a train phone going off and literally it's like cancel 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 we every everyone's work got obliterated and it was a case of i went to marcus he came to me and basically said, right, i need a roof over my head you need a business to still operate and my background was mostly in terms of the live event stuff it was kind of like i was the webcasting and video conferencing guy because you know that my corporate background lent itself to that uh, and dealing with you know multinational companies um so 
how I had to creatively think around a problem is that we had no money to invest. Um, and it was a case of, right, go in the warehouse and make something happen. That's partly why I've got my jacket on because it's freezing cold here in the, in the warehouse. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was just go in there and make something happen. So you kind of have to think creatively in that respect, but that's also knowing the limitations of various bits of equipment, knowing the limitations of various bits of software that you're using and then working ways around that. I think that's the way that I, I would personally say that's the creative thought is making something that isn't quite what it's supposed to be and then turning it into something else. Um, kind of, you sort of, Sort of hodgepodging things, I suppose. Uh, uh, that's kind of my creative way of, of doing it. But it, to me, though, IT skill sets, as what we would think with like PowerPoint and and Zoom and Teams and and, and Photoshop, actually, and and and, Vi- and Premiere and all the rest of those kind of things, IT is a skill set repertoire as a means to an end. It allows you to do the more creative things, so long as you know the ins and outs of why and how and what makes it work. If there's a problem, you can then solve it and deal with it. Um, because you don't want to be sat there on a job and go, ah, PC's broke. How do I fix it? Because, you, you know, otherwise you're stuffed. You, if you lose a day's work, you're stuffed at that point. You could lose the client. So you have to be a bit proactive in that sense. It's a really good answer. Um, can you tell us, have there been, or sort of, what are the, the, the possible barriers or challenges you've had to face to get where you've got? Um, one of the barriers is time, time to learn new skills. Um, always try and set aside some time to learn something new. It's, it's one of my sort of personal, um, one of my sort of personal mantras is once a, uh, once a man's given up his ability to learn, he's given up his ability to live. Basically <laughs> always learn something new, um, and always try to better yourself. Um, and that's a lot of sort of getting, uh, that's just a lot of personal uh, proactivity. Uh, that needs to sort of go off and do that. Uh, other other problems I've probably had is I'm quite a blunt and caustic character from time to time, which can be quite helpful. Sometimes in a, in a mission critical uh, situation, you do need to literally, well, not literally, you don't want to literally slap someone upside the head, but you, you kind of need to get in there and go, right, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to, you know, an almost just sort of take charge of the situation and grab by the horns. It can be a hindrance if you are, as a freelancer like me, you've kind of got to sell yourself. You, you, you're your own self-marketeer, as it were. Um, and so I kind of try and let my work do the talking rather than me because I don't exactly have the gift of the gab. <laughs> <laughs> now, Chris, no one has the ideal job that I know of. So can you tell us one or two of the best things about what you do and maybe one or two other things that are less good about what you do? Uh, one of the best things about it is, in normal times, is kind of actually the ability to uh, work with a plethora of different people and, ha- and learning new skills from these different people. In fact, actually, one of the examples I can give in our studio that we had to rig out nothing that I mentioned earlier, um, it was a case that there was a particular program that I used on a job six or seven months prior, and it was simply because someone mentioned it to me, showed me what it could do, I remembered it, and used it in there um so that's one of the benefits of it as i say just like you know different people at the moment with it all being virtual the one thing i do quite like is it's kind of a bit more of a structured day (laughs) most things are sort of now nine to five um but i do actually kind of miss the long days actually i i I, it's a bit strange i I think i did quite like the antisocial hours to be honest and then making a whole day of it and i think it's because i could be focused on it and that's probably one thing i don't like about is just the amount of communication that's going on at the moment it's 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 quite you're getting bombarded with a lot of different problems very quickly it's how to juggle all that um and what's probably the other thing i don't like at the moment uh no that's probably it i probably probably apart from just feeling a bit constrained at the moment but then we all are we're all stuck yeah. at home at the moment um and yeah that's fairly universal at the moment it's so normality. Um, can I ask you what personal qualities you think you need to follow the sort of career route that you've followed? Um, let's say self determination. Uh, you need to you need to actually sort of like have the ability to look at yourself objectively and understand where your um, where your pros and your cons are. 
So, for example, I'd say I know that I don't have the gift of the gap, but I'd, you, I'd sort of try and look to the strengths that I do have and play to them. Um, the ability to go off and proactively self-learn and fi just find something interesting, basically, and then extrapolate the how, why, and what makes that work. Once you understand those building blocks of anything, you can actually you know, do, do things from there. Um, Good answer. Yeah. Um, and finally, um, for people watching this video, have you any top tips you might offer? So top tips I would say would probably be don't, don't think of your career as something linear. Um, you can always sidestep and branch off into other things. Um, don't think that just because uh, there's, there's a job out there that you have to learn that specific, particular skill set to do that job. You can always sidestep and do something different um, and make your own destiny, I suppose. Um, for me, I, I originally started off being you know, on a payroll as a full-time employee. I found it a lot easier and a lot better balanced quality of life for me to be a freelancer. It's a lot more challenging, do not get me wrong, but the benefits are night and day and I feel a lot happier in myself for it. So. Chris, thank you. It's been fascinating to talk to you. Thank you so much for spending time with us this morning. Thank you. All right, thank you.